This is the Devotion Rewind, where we take a look back through the archive at some of Pastor Robert's most loved sermons. Join us as we get blessed once again through this powerful message. You know, sometimes we've gone through the pain of being rejected and misunderstood and uh, and misrepresented in the thoughts of others and we've not been able to help them realize that our ways were not what they thought they were until all of a sudden the Lord begins to prosper us and bless us and open their eyes. It's kind of like Joseph was hated by his brothers (laughs) and he was rejected by his brothers and despised by them. I mean, they wanted to kill him, literally. They were talking about killing him and then sold him. Wow, I mean, that is serious rejection. They sold him as a slave. But the day came and the Lord made things better than ever before and used Joseph to love and save and bless those very brothers and that they all marveled and they all realized that what was happening in Joseph was the Lord. And instead of them maybe so much admiring Joseph, which they did, they admired God's ability to take somebody who had been lost and bring them to a place of favor and increase. Oh, my dear friends, today I want to encourage you. Let the Lord bring you into the better than ever before. Go with me to Psalm 30, okay? Psalm 30. I really love this Psalm of David. It only has 12 little verses, but to me, Each of those verses are so personal and real to me. I I, I find every one of them so real. And in every one of them, I have found help from the Lord. I'm so grateful for the scripture. David says there in verse 1, I will extol you, O Lord, for you have lifted me up. In other words, I will cause you to be exalted. I will extol you. I will lift you up. In other words, I will say, look what the Lord did for me. For he has lifted me up. To him be the praise. And have not let my woes rejoice over me. O Lord, my God, I cried out to you and you healed me. Oh, dear friends, what a wonderful thing. When you can say, you know, I was ill and I tried everything. But every time I would cry out to the Lord, say, Lord, remember me. Lord, have mercy upon me. Lord, healing me will bring glory to your name as my children, my children's children. And then others will see what you've done for me, Lord. Oh, Lord, heal me for the glory of your name. Heal me for the praise and the glory of your name. Oh, I, I seek to put this faith in your heart. I'd seek to put this expectation in your heart through this message. And I want to encourage you. He will restore you. And it will be better than ever before. I know that the ever before maybe is all gone and died. And you've laid that down and you've given that up. But now the Lord, like Job, will bring you into a place where it will be better than ever before. And God is able to do this. Oh Lord, you brought my soul up from the grave. You've kept me alive that I should not go down to the pit. Oh, I know people that shouldn't be here today. I'm one of them. But God's kept us alive for the glory of his name. Sing praise to the Lord. Sing praise to the Lord, you saints of his. And give thanks at the remembrance of his holy name. For his anger is but for a moment. His favor is for life. Weeping may endure for the night, but joy comes in the morning. Now in my prosperity, I said, I shall never be moved. Lord, by your favor, you've made my mountain stand strong. Then you hit your face and I was in trouble. I cried out to you, O Lord. And to the Lord I make my supplication. What profit is it? What profit is there in my blood? When I go down to the pit, will the dust praise you? 
Will it declare your truth? Hear, O Lord, and have mercy upon me, O Lord. Be my helper. Oh my goodness, I love the next two verses. In other words, David says, you know, I used to be so strong and blessed. I thought I was invincible. And suddenly the Lord withdrew his face from me and everything came crumbling down and my strength evaporated. My courage was gone and I was overtaken by the least difficulties. And I realized, oh my goodness, it is the Lord who is the joy and the rejoicing of my heart. It's the Lord who's the light and my salvation and strength. It's the Lord. Oh Lord, you have turned from me my mourning into dancing and put off sackcloth and clothed me with gladness to the end. Here it comes that my glory may sing praise to you and not be silent, O Lord my God. I will give thanks to you forever. That little verse 12, oh, how I love it and pray it. I pray it and pray it so often. That my glory may give praise to you. My glory. What do you mean, my glory? Me as a human being. Me as a person. You see, that is what I believe we all have been created for. We have all been created to the praise and the glory of God. We're all been created to reflect His amazing image. We've all been created to be like Him. You know, I will close with these thoughts with you today. When Jesus was overwhelmed, and you see that in John chapter 12, because of what was ahead of him, the cross, and all that came along with it. I want you to see what he said, because I want to close with this thought with you. Is there then no glory in the valleys? Is there then no praise to God in my weakness, in my sorrow, and in my pain, in, what I, in where I am? Oh, dear friends, I believe there is. He is the lily of the valleys. He is that bright and morning star that brings you into the new day, but He is the one that is there with you in the valley. And you're not alone in your difficulties. And I find that actually utterly sweet when I meet people that are in the lowest of the lowest, in the weakest of the weakest, in the poorest of the poorest, and their souls are completely weaned by the wonderful comfort of the Lord's presence and their souls are sweet and surrendered and completely at rest in the Lord's provident mercies and goodness. And I see this here in Jesus. He says, my soul is troubled in verse 27 of John 12. And what shall I then say? Father, save me from this hour. But it's for this very purpose that I've come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. And the voice came from heaven saying, I have both glorified it and I will glorify it again. Oh my goodness, dear friends, the heavenly Father is looking at you with such penetrating mercies and jealousy to glorify his name in you and through you. You know, when Jesus had shared communion as we did today in that room with his disciples, and after he had broken the bread and given it, he also gave a piece to Judas. And the moment Judas received that bread, Jesus looked at Judas and said, Judas, what you're going to do, go do it quickly. And Satan had gone into Judas and took him out of that room to Caiaphas' house to betray Jesus and to sell him out for 30 pieces of silver, the value of a person. And then, Jesus looked at all of his disciples, something that I find most phenomenal. Here he's facing the greatest trial and conflict of any human person could ever have experienced in this life. And he says, now the Son of Man is glorified and God is glorified in him. And if God is glorified in him, God will glorify him in himself and glorify him immediately. So the Lord Jesus is saying, now, now you're going to see the glory of the Lord. 
And you know, that's what the Lord was living for. And that is what I plead with you. Live for this. Live for this today, right now, whatever the conditions or circumstances of your life. Let me close with reading this. Jesus said in John 8, verse 50 and verse 54, I am not in search of honor for myself. I don't seek and I'm not aiming for my own glory. There is one who looks after that. He seeks my glory. He is the judge. If I were to glorify myself, magnify praise and honor myself, I would have no real glory, for my glory would be nothing and worthless. My honor must come to me from my Father. It is my Father who glorifies me, extols me, magnifies his and praises me, of whom you say that he is your God. Oh, my dear friends, I believe God wants to restore and make things better than ever before for the glory of his name. Now believe this today. All of us will be able to look back and say, you know, if it wasn't for the Lord, I would have been consumed alive. If it wasn't for the Lord, I wouldn't be here. If it wasn't for the Lord, I wouldn't be happily married. If it wasn't for the Lord, I wouldn't have children. If it wasn't for the Lord, I wouldn't have health. If it wasn't for the Lord, I wouldn't have this financial wealth. If it wasn't for the Lord, I'd be lost in sin and darkness and anger. You know, we could go on and on and on. To God be the glory. If you need forgiveness with sin of sins, would you put your hand on your heart? God knows your struggle. And He's ready, ready to forgive you and cleanse you. So just pray this after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I repent of all my sins and I ask you to forgive me. Create in me a clean heart. Cleanse me with your precious blood and wash me white as snow and fill me with your Holy Spirit. Fill me with your love. I'm yours, Lord. Save me. Amen. Thank you for listening to today's installment of Devotion Rewind. If you are blessed by today's message, please feel free to contact us and visit our website at lifechurchuk.org.